All right. Now that we know how to, how to connect to a Cisco router, we're going to go ahead and start navigating through the iOS. All right. In order to start navigating through the iOS, obviously, we need to learn some commands. So let's say you boot up uh, to the router and you're here, it says router con zero because you're connected to the console port of the router. It's now available. Plus, uh, press return to get started. So we hit enter and there we are. And if you see a prompt, you need to start learning your prompts. If you see a prompt that has the greater than symbol, that is called user mode. User mode. If you want to know what commands are available under any prompt, you type question mark. And obviously, there's going to be a lot more commands on a real iOS, okay? But at least you know what commands are underneath here, all right? So it'll give you an idea what to type. Can you type a question mark in the iOS? I have heard both. I have heard yes. I have heard no. So if you forget, you know, and then you need that context sensitive help, then type the question mark. And if it, something comes up, hey, great. They're not going to take points out for that. But remember, the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. Uh, so type question mark so you can see all the commands are there. What we're interested in is getting into privilege mode. Because in user mode, you really can only do very passive commands. You can see disable, disconnect, exit, log out, ping, SSH, telnet. Very, very passive command. You're not going to hurt the router in any kind of way. So what we want to do is we want to turn on privilege mode. So what do we do? We type the word enable. And then once we type the word enable, we now are in privilege mode. Now privilege mode is dangerous because in privilege mode we can erase the startup config. We can delete the flash if we wanted to, delete the iOS, get rid of it. Uh, it could take us to other prompts, all right, such as global configuration, and then from there, we can get to interface configuration, sub-interface configuration, router configuration. So definitely, you want to secure, when we start doing the administrative commands, you will see how to secure by using basic passwords and usernames to secure to the privilege mode uh, area. Okay, You just don't want anybody getting into privilege mode. And if you do, you can actually set some security parameters where you can put them through level one through 15 and they can only do so many things, all right? But when you type enable, that takes you to privilege mode. So when you're in privilege mode, what can you do? Well, let's type the question mark. Well, here, there's one command that your book shows you that you type clock, all right? You can set the clock. One of the ones that I like, which I don't see right now, right here, which is the, you see? Right down here somewhere. Right now, I could have sworn that said, it says undebug, I could have sworn that said underdog. Okay. <laughs> All right. Wow, I don't see it. It's one that's the clock and one that, oh, terminal. And then terminal, because one of the good commands is terminal history size, because one of the things when you're configuring, especially in a real world scenario, because obviously in the, in the CCNA exam, you're not going to have to type that. But in a real world command, in a real world scenario, you want to type terminal history size, and then you can go from, you know, I think it's 0 to 256. Let's just type it here real quick so you can see it. Terminal, history, size, and we'll put a question mark. Oh, it's from 0 to 256, which means it'll remember the last 256 commands that you type. You can type whatever it is that you want. You can type 50, and then whatever prompt you're in, it'll remember the last 50 commands that you type. And you can use the up arrow, up arrow, and you can be a little bit more efficient with that. So that's one command that you can type there. But what we're interested in, because you can only do very passive commands. One of the commands that you'll do here a lot is show or ping or trace route. You can do telnet. You can SSH. You can go ahead and do a clear IP or SPF process. So there's many little passive commands. Copy, run, start. Okay. Uh, copy, flash, TFTP. So again, you're going to be doing many commands from privilege mode. But in order to configure the router as a whole through the terminal that we're in, you have to type config 
T. Now you see how the prompt changed. We type config T. Now we're in global, global configuration mode. So anything we do now affects the router as a whole. One command, especially, that really holds to this would be CDP. CDP run. If CDP, and what is CDP, just to give you a, a quick intro to it, is the Cisco Discovery Protocol. If it's not turned on globally, you will need to do, go to global configuration and do CDP run, and it will turn on globally. But you can also go into an interface. Now, once you get to global configuration, it will allow you to go to other, uh, inter other parts of the router, like router configuration mode, interface configuration mode, sub-interface configuration mode. If you're doing access list, you see a named access list, you can all go into different modes from global configuration. You couldn't go into an interface if you're in privilege mode. You couldn't go into an interface if you're in user mode. You couldn't get to global configuration if you were in user mode. So you gotta, it's a stepping process. Remember back in the DOS days, right? We had to go step by step to get to where we want to go. And you cannot type the command all in one line. You're gonna say, well, I want to go to this particular interface. So I'm gonna type, I'm in uh, privilege mode, let's say. I'm gonna type, well, config T backslash uh, interface F01 backslash and then type the command that you want. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. Okay? So CDP is one that holds true to this one. This one, he just turned on CDP globally, or I just turned on CDP globally. But let's say if you go to an interface, interface, let's say F0 slash 0, which is one of the interfaces that's there, invalid, okay? So, um, <laughs> so I'm going to do something that you can't do on the test. Do... You can do the do, show interface, int brief, uh, do show int brief, okay, that didn't work, let me go back to privilege mode, show int brief, oh, I know why it didn't work, show IP, how about that one, show IP and brief, all right, so we have gigabit interfaces, all right, so let's go back to global, and I'm going to go int g0 slash 0. If I wanted to turn on, now I'm in, I went from global to an interface configuration mode. In this case, I had to step back out because I forgot to put IP. So I was like, okay, what's going on? But now I, I did a uh, show IP in brief that allows me to see what is, what are, I should say, the interfaces that are that we'll be using so now I'm inside that particular interface so I can do CDP enable or CDP or no CDP enable sorry no CDP enable anytime that you want to take something out whether it be an IP address an access list anything that you want to negate that you want to take out you will have to put no in front of that command. So if I turn that on on that interface, but let's say that interface was really facing out to the internet, I want to send any CDP uh, advertisements out to the internet, I can turn just on that particular interface, I can turn that off. But again, I want to give too much away because we'll have a section just on that one. We can see the navigation. Uh, sub interface, int uh, g, zero slash zero dot one that's how you create a sub interface so we have a sub interface uh, prompt that you need to be in and you need to understand what can you type under those interfaces and it all depends on your configuration you see you have IPv6 that's already there the encapsulation which you will be doing when we do inter VLAN communication with the dot one Q bandwidth so all these different things, there's all these different sub-interfaces. We need to know what to type. How will you be tested on things like this? They will have a particular command. Let's say the CDP enable, and they will have user mode, privilege mode, global configuration mode, and interface configuration mode, and then you need to choose the correct one. What if it's CDP enable, that will be under the config if, right? So you need to know that. You need to know that if you're running this particular command, that you have to run it under 
the interface configuration mode. Whether you're, if you're running CDP run, you're running it under global configuration mode. And if you're putting an IP address on a router, then you're doing it under interface configuration mode. So these, these are the way, or this is the way that they're going to test you when it comes to the CCNA certification. But you're gonna have so much practice doing these labs that it's gonna become second nature to you. But definitely the navigation throughout any operating system is key, whether it be a Microsoft, Linux, Mac, or a Cisco iOS, you need to make sure that you know how to navigate and what commands you will be typing once you get there. And if you wanna back out, exit, takes you one out, exit, takes you back out, and now you're in privilege mode. Are they shortcuts? Sure, control Z. Control Z takes you from wherever you're at right back to privilege mode, all right? And I'll, as we go along through the course, I'll show you different shortcut commands, break commands, uh, like the do command, like or control shift six is a break command or break anything. So I will show the shortcuts, but I will give you my little disclaimer that you cannot do that on the exam. On the exam, there is no do. On the exam, there are no control shift six. There are no do, you know up arrows or anything like that. Make sure that you know how to type everything the long way the long way now all these handouts will be made available to you you'll have all the commands for that you would you that the commands that you would need so you don't have an issue i mean you have your book you're going to have these lessons and i'm going to give you the handouts so you won't have any confusions all right that is navigating as you can see through the router is just simply going either exit to back out one or being in the right interface to get to the right point because look what happened, just to end it real quick, uh, before I end it real quick, if I type interface uh, G0 slash 0, it's going to give me an error. It's going to give me an error. He says, well, sorry, you made an error. We, that is the right command, but I'm at the wrong place. So i got to make sure that I'm in config, and then I can type, see, I up arrowed, and now it'll give me the right thing. So you need to be under the right prompt to type the right command, to get you where you need to go. All right, so navigation through a router is extremely important, but don't worry, you'll have plenty of practice. I'll see you in the next one.